Hello there. What's going on, everybody? Daylight savings time is crap, and we need to get rid of it. Anyway, um, so Armada. We got uh, some more Armada previews. The Munificent. Uh, we don't have a full-blown article just yet. Uh, I'm guessing Monday. I mean, just like it's gonna follow the same same playbook as as last uh, last week or this this current week. It feels like last week. It feels like last week because um, I had yesterday off of work, so yesterday was kind of like a holiday. It felt like a little mini weekend, and so coming back to work today, it's like feels like Monday again, but it's not Monday. So I'm, I'm a little I'm a little thrown off. Plus, we keep changing the t the clocks like every year, and so it takes me a long like it takes me longer and longer every six months for my little rhythms bio rhythms to adjust. <clears throat> anyway, um, we do have. Uh, you know, a, a look at the Munificent, and I don't think there's a whole lot new in this one, but it did cause me to go back and look at the Munificent a little bit more. Um, and, and they haven't shown us a whole lot. I don't think we've seen the full ship card of the, the Munificent, but we got some little, little kind of hints on it, um, because it's a red dice machine, and I think I'm going to love it. Um, I'm really curious about the cost of what's this going to be, though. So we got, um, they showed us kind of like that little blueprint for the Munificent, just like they showed for the uh, Acclimator last time. Um, and, uh, and, and so the Munificent's got two red and two blue in the front arc. Uh, it's got two red in the rear, which means it'll be good for Salvo. <clears throat> and it's got three red on the side, which is really good. Um... It's got a good. It's got a good side arc. It's a. Uh, it's a broadside ship, but it's also got a good front arc. So it doesn't have to be. Again, it's another ship you don't need gunnery teams with. It's got. Its dice are pretty evenly spread around, uh, which, which is going to be really fun. Um, I'm looking forward to it. Like I, 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 it's a ship that I think, and 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 what else is cool? <clears throat> from what I can gather from some of the screenshots and things that we've seen, it looks like. Out of the two versions of the Munificent that we're going to see, one of them has a red die for anti-squadron. And the other one has two red dice for anti-squadron. Double red. Um, that's just insane. And, and I, Now, I'm wondering if there maybe was a printing or a, or a rendering error or something like that. Uh, but this goes back to, that, I think, that first uh, Gen Con video. Double red flak. I was going back and looking at some of the old uh, screen captures and things like that. That I that when they first kind of showed a lot of the cards like kind of moving in this 3D render. Um, but if that's the case, just a straight up double red, like that's insane. Like I could see just running all munificence. How many starters? Well, we're gonna get. To, we got. We got a lot of questions. We got questions that are coming in. We're gonna. We're gonna get to some of those questions. Um, I'm sorry. There's a lot of chat scrolling by, so I'm gonna I'm gonna try and get to the uh, questions. But yeah, the um, Link Turbolaser Towers might end up getting uh, might end up getting a little bit um, nerfed or something. I don't know, but um, yeah, that's that's kind of insane um, that they that they have that much. By the way, have you guys seen? Um, the uh, Marvel Crisis Protocol unboxing I did today, or well, it, it went up last night. But uh, freaking, I just got these guys still in front of me right now. We got Wolverine and Sabretooth. Like, oh, they're so cool! Like, I'm so happy to have. Them. They're sitting right in front of me as I'm talking to you guys, so I'm getting distracted by I'm staring at all these other X Men boxes that I haven't even unboxed yet. Uh, I've just been busy. Um, anyway, yes. Yeah, so the Munificent will probably be the the um, the highlight of the of the next. Uh, I, I'm presuming. Monday, we'll be getting an article. What I'm going to do is I have been looking at kind of altering the timeline of when I post videos. Because if you guys live in the United States, um, or especially if you're East Coast, you'll notice I post all my videos at 7 a.m. Eastern Time. Which is like, what, uh, 4, 4 a.m. Pacific, you know, and... Uh, I, I'm probably not reaching as many people with like a video posted at that at that time. So I'm looking at going later in the day and when I post videos. Uh, because the problem is like making stuff at 7 a.m. Now, I don't actually post stuff at 7 a.m. 
I work on stuff like a day prior, um, and I then take, uh, you know, get it ready, uploaded it. Uh, so, I mean, sometimes multiple days prior, you know, but I, I basically I get stuff uploaded and I can schedule the upload. So, so 7 a.m. is the time I've been going with, and I think that's a bad time to publish videos. A big problem with that is like when there's new news or an article that comes out in the afternoon, um, it's harder for me to react to it and try to get um, everything um, online. And so you're in Poland and the timing's perfect. Okay, well, that, that, I mean, that's, that's good information. doesn't mean I'll always, I, I can still do some things in the morning, but, uh, but I think doing stuff l later in the afternoon is better for me personally because I have a better chance to be able to react to an article dropping. So like next Monday, for example, they've been dropping articles at like 11. Um, and so when an article comes out at 11 and you have to wait almost like, like 20 hours or so, um, you know, like almost a whole day before I get my video up, like that's, I, I, you know, kind of problematic for me. And I, I, I had been in the, in the past uh, more accustomed to doing like breaking videos and stuff like that. And, and, um, and so I want to try and get back in the habit of that. Um, now, granted, if I'm posting something later in the day and you are in the habit of watching my stuff early in the morning, like or on your morning commute or whatever, you can still do that. You'll just, it won't have been just published. It will have been published, you know, maybe the night prior. So you're this, you know, I don't think, I mean, I, I don't think this is a really big deal, but it's going to help me to be able to get article uh, reaction videos and things like that much quicker. Um, so for other stuff, uh, so yeah, I want to get to some of you guys' uh, questions here, but if you're just joining in, basically uh, on Fantasy Flights, like Twitter and Facebook and stuff like that, or social media, they just posted a picture of uh, kind of like a, a blueprint of the Munificent, and we can see that it's uh, it's got some some uh, red and blue in the front. It's got three red dye on the sides and two red in the back. Like blue is, or the, I think it's two red and two blue, so you got four dice in the front wall, so that's technically more dice, the three red on the side, is kind of makes it want to be a side arc ship. It's it's weird how it can be double, and um, it re it reminds me a little bit of kind of because it's a medium based ship of of the uh, like assault frigate Mark II for the rebels, but is enough difference there. First, for one, it's got red uh, flak, which is huge. Um, I think the more expensive version is going to have two red dice for anti squadron. Then uh, that was basically from. Uh, from looking at the Armada video that they came out with uh, during Gen Con, where they kind of showed us the Clone Wars. So if that's really two red dice and one, and maybe one red die for the cheaper one, that's insane. That's um, maybe not insane, but that's game changing. Because for me, somebody who doesn't like to run squadrons and likes red dice ships, um, like I love to run all Architons with very few squadrons. Um, I, I, you know, and they only have one black die, so they have to, squadrons have to get close, and then at most I can do one damage at a time to them, right? So, uh, well, usually one damage at a time. Um, red dice, having two red dice, I can potentially do four dice to a squadron, uh, for damage, especially with linked turbo laser towers. And then I can still have my three red dice, um, so, you know, depending on the cost of these guys, I can run, like, four or five of them, maybe, in a list, not run any squadrons, and just have, like, just completely kill you alone. Now, granted, they're not going to be super good up close but the good news is that red dice can still roll doubles up close and you know you're also less likely to be obstructed you're also less likely to have evades counter your red dice when your enemy fleets get in closer so uh i think that's why we're seeing like um evade on squadrons like we saw axe last week with the evade on a squadron i'm like why are squadrons getting evade well red dice is probably going to be part of the thing that the clone wars have for for flak a little bit more commonly and that's just really cool, um, and that also means like uh, you're 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 able gonna you're gonna be able to do those. Um, what's that upgrade uh, for the weapons team upgrade that you do a damage to your own engaged squadron to also do an extra damage to your opponent? Like the separatists are gonna be able to do that like in droves, and maybe that's kind of one of the reasons why uh, like separatists are gonna want to have a couple of vultures so they can just be like, oh yeah, well, my vulture is gonna take a damage to also do another damage to your ace. Ruthless strategists, thank you, thank you. Um, you know, I, I've used it enough times, I should have that completely memorized. It's one of my favorite upgrades for, for certain builds, especially with red flak. Um, but yeah, Link Turbo Laser Tower seems like that's going to be the all-star um, for this this ne next wave that's coming in. Um, yeah. 
Do you think it'll be a fleet of glass cannons? I mean, I guess we're going to see Monday, but I'm, that's kind of one of the things I'm wondering is, and of course the cost is going to dictate it, right? Are we going to see, uh, you know, a 90 point cost on a medium chip? Then, uh, then it'll be, it'll be really tough. But if it's going to be like 60, upper 60s, maybe even 70, um, it might not have that much hull. Now, medium ship is probably going to at least have five hull, um, if not more than that. Pro I'm guessing six. I'm guessing six hull for the munificent. They may have even teased that already, and maybe it's just dormant in my head. I, I don't. I don't have it. I'm not accessing that memory directly. I'm just. I'm like. I'm thinking that seems like that would be right, and I'm wondering if maybe that's. Maybe, maybe it was like kind of shown in one of the um, one of the clips they showed earlier. But but I'm really interested to see the whole entire both upgrade cards. It also looks like um, like you can barely see some of the upgrades that the Munificent, at least one of the Munificent variants can take, and it looks like they can take Turbo Lasers. So, um, so yeah, that's... Uh, the amount of engineering these ships have will be insane. They look like they'll be able to repair themselves faster than people can kill them. Um, I mean, at long range, maybe. Maybe. I mean, long range shots are great, but you're you know you're also not always getting uh, a lot of damage. You know the doubles are kind of rare. I mean sometimes you get lucky and you roll a lot of doubles. Sometimes you do. Um, and then also, also with salvo being a thing too. You know having two red in the rear means you can salvo fairly well at even at long range. Um, but yeah, so, so I'm gonna get to some of the questions here. Let's see. Um, do you think they'll hit December 4th, the target release? And do you think the ships will be available individually boxed since you don't want to buy multiple starters? Uh, yes and no. I do think we're going to see a December 4th release. Um, I think that's been locked in for a while. And uh, that goes back from FFD just recently updating that date to also uh, Lion Rampant as a distributor having that date. Uh, you know, like I, I think that basically there's enough different sources saying December 4th that it's or it's locked in by now. I think if it was going to be delayed, they uh, we would have known already. Granted, surprises can always happen. Um, I'm just annoyed that I don't have one in my hands yet, uh, you know, or all of this stuff in my hands yet. Um, now, do I think those ships are going to be available individually? No, I do not. Um, I, so you want to? I think everybody is going to probably want to get to well. Er, Everybody who wants to play Armada like like on a more dedicated level, it will want at least two starters. I could see some people getting three starters of a certain faction. If you wanted to run like triple Munificent, like I could see that being a thing. Um, but what I do think is it is possible that we will see alternate versions of the Acclimator and or the Munificent um, show up at some point. And this is going to go to other other ship types also. I'm, I'm looking at you, Venator. Oh, the Architons and Raiders are back in stock, people are saying in the chat channel. I haven't checked this yet. So if you guys are watching, um, you can check out Fantasy Flight Games' website. Like They just had a bunch of uh, reprints. Now, this is cool if so, because I've been saying this for years. Like, Well, not years, but as soon as the Clone Wars came out and there were you know new people were going to be getting into the game, they were going to try to also push to have everything else reprinted around the same time. So when people come back into the game, they can do it. Um, it should the Muni Magnificent shows six hull. Okay, good. Thank you. Uh, so somebody in the chat was just saying that that yeah, Steel Strategy has uh, has has a screen cap of it. I had done a couple of screen caps too, and honestly, like I I, I, I looked through some of the some of the pictures that I had uh, saved from Gen Con and. And, you know, really just kind of browsing really quick before I made this live stream because this just this thing just got posted and I I don't plan a lot of my live streams and my videos out as methodically as a lot of other content creators do. Um, I am driven primarily by my insatiable hype for this game. So sometimes, like I lose, like that's why I'll make a lot of mistakes sometimes, and I'll be like, oh my, like. I was doing an unboxing the other day of um, uh, the child, uh, baby Yoda, and um, and like the necklace was the Mythosaur, but I kept calling it Mudhorn. Now I know that it's a Mythosaur, not a Mudhorn, but I was so excited and how cute this was, and I, my love for Star Wars and all of this new cool stuff that we're getting, like honestly, just overwhelms me. And I get, you know, I I, I have brain farts from time to time, 
And so, and, and that's kind of one of the things that, that will happen when I do these videos too is, and I'll make mistakes in my battle reports sometimes also, but you know, it, it's, I just, I'm so excited to get content out there and to talk with you guys and be like, oh my gosh, we got something. Like even, even today, this live stream with the munificent picture being shown, um, I don't think there's much all new information. I think everything that's there is stuff that we could have deciphered if you were eagle-eyed and you were watching you know, the screen grabs and watching the video presentation from Gen Con and all of this other stuff. But it's, 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 uh, it's good to have it confirmed because sometimes, like if you go back to the early days of Armada, some of the first promotional stuff that they showed got changed a little bit. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, I do. I, yeah, I have mistakes. You guys are funny in the chat. I'm reading some of the comments. But, uh, but yeah, so... You know, like there are a lot of things changed. Um, I think uh, early on in the game, all a lot of the ships had double flak. There were some ships that had triple flak. I think the Nebulon had three blue dice for its anti squadron, and uh, not long before release, like when this game was at Gen Con and being demoed for the first time, you looked at some of the initial uh, cards that were printed out for the for that that final demo, like near completion. And I think it was like last minute changes that I said, you know what, this is a little too strong. Let's go back, you know. So there was a lot of little little changes like that. Um, the movement tool was different. It was like plastic bits with cardboard, other pieces and stuff like that. Um, so, uh, you know, like you know, going back. So, so having stuff kind of confirmed, like, you know, this is how it's going to be. It kind of helps ensure there was no last minute changes. But I do think there's a chance that because there's so there is a limited number, and I talked about this with uh, Michael Gurness a little bit. Like there's a there's a finite number of ships that you can make, and so I think that's one of the things that maybe is driving them uh, to not have this you know super quick release schedule. Uh, to, to like like Legion has a new you know release coming out like every month almost you know. Um, and, and, and so Armada, if Armada did that, they would have exhausted their supply of ships in, in you know, in, in the first year. If they had that, you know, you know, that much stuff coming out as, as, as some, some other games do. And so that's why we have a slower release schedule with Armada. And that's, and that's a good thing. Also kind of is kind of good on a lot of people's uh, finances. So they were not stuck trying to buy all this stuff like crazy. And that is awesome. Um, all right, what are we doing here? Let's see. Ba, 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 ba. Oh, okay. All right. Um, but because of that, so this is kind of going back to another question from the chat. I do think at some point we might see uh, some of the Clone Wars ships kind of get what I'm going to call the Chimera treatment. Um, speaking of Chimera, I'm wearing my Chimera shirt. If you would like one, we can get those are down in the video description. If you're watching on mobile, there is a link, like if you hit the little down arrow, I think that's over here. If you're watching on desktop, it'll be over here and you have to click see more. That's where all the links are if you are interested in like merch or any more, uh, getting more stuff. Um, but anyway, um, we have, uh, you know, we've seen the Chimera come out as an alternate ISD with, hey, here's a second ship. It's the same ship, but it's a repaint and it's almost like an Aces pack. You get those in X-Wing, right? You get Aces packs. You get Here's the same thing, but here's some different cards to go with it and an extra model. I think they'll do that for the Venator. Uh, I think they'll do that possibly for the Munificent. I mean, ships that were super, super common. Um, do you think any of the Rebels ships will get the Chimera update? Or like, like a, 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 a basically a second version of a Rebel ship? Maybe, but I feel like the... Uh, I feel like the Mon Calamari ships have gotten that. Like the the like the, the MC eighty kind of has two ver. I mean, it's not the same um, because it's it's a different um, physical ship. So the model itself is different between the Liberty and the Home One, but they are still MC eighties. And granted, they are they they handle and 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 everything totally differently. But like from a certain point of view, like they're still MC eighties, right? And so a lot of people want like the wingless Liberty, like that other, there was like another MC-80 variant at the Battle of Endor. I'm like, gosh, I feel that's going to feel just like the Home 1. Because all it is is a Home 1 with like a few more engines on it. And I'm like, ah, I just, just, I feel like, you know, it, stuff like that, I, I, don't, I don't know. I don't, and, and to be honest, I'm kind of tired of the Rebels getting big ships all the time. Oh, we got a super chat from Mario Lara. Mario, what's going on? Thank you, man. He says, Clone Wars hype. That's exactly what is going on right now? Uh, we are 
we're kind of in the Armada Blitz. We've had an article already Monday. It looks like the Separatist article is going to be this coming Monday. So look for a video for, uh, from me on that um, either in the afternoon or early evening. I'm going to try and get my videos adjusted. And so instead of 7 in the morning or like early in the morning, I'm going to have them trying to come out in the afternoon or early evening. Uh, so this way you can watch them. Now you can still watch videos in the morning. If you don't watch my evening video, you can always just watch it in the morning in your morning commute. But with so much stuff coming out, I, I figured that's a good time to be able to try and get stuff uh, published. Um, Skeletor hype too. Yeah, as a matter of fact, um, I don't know if you can see him. We got Skeletor right here. Yeah, we got uh, the Masters of the Universe uh, uh, game from uh, Archon is going to be coming to Kickstarter soon. And so that is cool. Yeah, they were really cool, and they sent me out him and uh, He Man. So I've got He Man and Skeletor. That was that. Was, that's actually that's really cool. Like I don't know if they're I don't know if I'm gonna be doing like a, a preview for the whole board game or not. Um, I, I I would be I would love to. Like uh, that's one. Like I'm because Archon's prototypes are like high quality. Like they're really good prototypes. Um, so I'm excited about that. Like the Wolfenstein prototype they sent me is like amazing. Um, the minis, because they're full production quality minis for the most part. All right, let me see. I missed some uh, some some questions. Um, all right, let's see. Hammerhead Corvettes maybe and Neb updates. Oh oh, for more. All right, so going back to more our uh, Rebel ships, getting getting kind of the the treatment. Um, that's a possibility. I, I mean, CR-90 is definitely, uh, like, the most common and recognizable ships are the ones that I think are the best candidates for getting, like, a repaint or an Aces pack or the Chimera um, a treatment, right? So I think uh, I think definitely the uh, a CR-90 is a candidate. I think a Nebulon is a candidate for something like that. Um, I think those are the best two options. I'm looking at my Rebel ships right now. Hammerhead could be, but the fact that we have two Hammerheads in the one pack makes me think it's maybe not the best option. Um, you know, but also if it's a smaller, cheaper ship, then maybe people will be more likely to buy multiples of them. So from a marketing stand standpoint, you know, those small ships that were in blister packs are good options there. Hmm. I'll, I'll say this. There's, even though I'm kind of tired of seeing Rebels get large ships, uh, over and over again because they're pre predominantly a fleet that has hodgepodges of smaller ships. Like I really want the Dornian gunship and and and, and a lot of the in assault frigate Mark One also would be a really good one. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if we saw uh, another Starhawk. Um, the the Starhawk prototype, basically. I I don't think the game needs that, and I don't think the Rebels need that, but because that the alternate version of the Starhawk, you know, um, is canon with, you know, the, the more recessed tractor beam in there. Um, it's possible. Like, we could get a Star Wars Squadrons-based um, wave, which I think would be really cool. We could get... And you know what they could do? What I would, actually I would be in favor of? I'd say let's get a... Let's get a... Uh, Um, yeah, let's get a, there we go, a campaign or just a cardboard pack, but, uh, let's get a cardboard pack of just stuff for Star Wars Squadrons. You can have more commanders that way. You can have new upgrades. You can have titles, all of these things. You can have more stuff for the, you can have a prototype title for the Starhawk. You know, you could do a lot. Maybe you even give it a points cost reduction, or maybe you make its uh, tractor beam more volatile and unstable and, you know, things like that, or uh, because it's still in development or something. You know, you could, you could come up with a lot of new stuff if you wanted to come up with new, new things to do. Um, and there was a lot of, there was a good number of capital ships in, in the game. You had the MC-75, you had CR-90s, you have Nebulons, you've got the Starhawk, um... I think that's, and you got GR-75s. So you got five Rebel capital ships in Star Wars Squadrons. Um, plus, 
Uh, you've got a lot of Imperial ships that could stand to get some love from a cardboard pack for Star Wars Squadrons. You've got Zantis. You've got Quasar Fires. Um, both of those show up in the campaign, but not in the actual um, thing. You've got Raiders. You've got an ISD. And you've got Architons. So, lots of potential there. That's exciting. So, five ships each. And it's, and it's good symmetry. Five capital ships. Um, man, that's exciting. I would love to see them expand that game a little bit more. How many guys are watching right now have played Star Wars Squadrons or are interested in playing Star Wars Squadrons? Because that's, that's a fun game. That's a really fun game. All right, let's see what... Uh, I'm going to kind of... Uh, Check out some of the uh, stuff. Um, let's see, let's see. There'd need to be another famous version of the ship with distinctive visuals. Right, right. Now that, well, that's, that's certainly what would have to happen. But the thing is, I think there are famous versions of some of these ships with distinctive visuals. Um, or at least semi-famous. For example, the CR-90 that we have in Star Wars Armada has red paint on it. But the CR-90s that we saw in Rebels had blue paint on them, right? So you could do that. You could do that alternate color scheme. Um, Nebulons kind of all look about the same. I mean, we may see some more stuff in The Mandalorian, too. There are rumors of capital ships showing up in The Mandalorian. And, uh, and so, you know, maybe, maybe we'll get uh, an, you know, some inspiration from an Aces pack from, from that. Or, or from just from future stuff. I mean, you maybe... Maybe the next movie, like, I, we, we should be getting news on it. Well, maybe not. 2020 has put everything on hold. I was going to say, we should be getting news of another movie at some point. Um, do you think we'll still see Tarkin and Yularen as Republic commanders? Yes. I think that's a great... I think, I think Yularen first. I think you might see Tarkin as an officer, but I think, you all, I think there's also room for him to be a commander. Um, for, absolutely. Um... <clears throat> But yes, um, anyway, so if you're just joining, if you're joining late or whatever, you know, we've got a, a munificent preview today. Uh, well, not a full preview, just a little, um, so, uh, you know, just a, just a little uh, image that kind of shows us the two red, two blue in the front, the three red on the side, uh, and oh, two red in the back, uh, which is nice for the munificent. And that's just for one of the versions. That's going to be, I think, the munificent two or the more expensive version. Um, and, and, and going back and looking through some of the old images, it looks like it's going to have two red anti-squadron dice uh, and then one red anti-squadron dice for the cheaper version. That's what I'm kind of gathering. It's one one red flak or two red flak, which is really crazy. Like, Link Turbo Laser Turrets, I feel like, will be stapled to this ship. Unless, of course, you do have a big squadron presence and don't need to make your shots be anti-squadron. So, but still, Link Turbo Laser Turrets is is so good in like all of those situations, which is kind of crazy. Um, so yeah, so that has been going on. Uh, that was kind of the big thing I wanted to talk about. Um, if you guys, uh, how many of you guys watching are, have, you know, are, are interested in Marvel Crisis Protocol or the X-Men? The next video coming up is Mystique and Beast. That one will probably go live like maybe later today. Um, so yeah, that one is, uh, that one's coming out. We've got uh, Magneto and Toad, and then Cyclops and Storm. I still have I still have them wrapped up. I haven't even unboxed them yet, so they're they're going to be worked on. We'll get those out. They'll, they'll be out this weekend, and uh, and then Monday we're going to have a uh, Separatist preview. So that's also really cool. Um, Twelve Days of Life Day is going to be happening. So there is some uh, some goodies if you're uh, if you're Legion players. I might have. It's going to be a combination of I think physical gifts and digital gifts there could, you know there could be extra gift cards that uh, just get, end up being given out there could be some sponsored interest uh, if somebody is uh, you know if, and, and and there's still time you know if, if anybody wants to sponsor giveaways you know we can uh, we can do that um, and uh, but yes so there's there's lots of stuff to be able to give away and things like that um, I want to touch on something else too. Somebody had asked, and I don't remember where, but I remember saying something about like, oh, somebody saying, oh, I'm going to be getting three Venators when, when those come out. And I wonder if that's not the best idea. Because I feel like the Venator is one of those ships that can get multiple versions. Um, and 
uh, you know, and, and, and I just, I wonder if, because there were so many Venators, right? I feel like that's the number one most likely ship in the Clone Wars to get multiple versions. Um, so we could get like a Venator, and then maybe later on we get like a named Venator. Like, I honestly, off the top of my head, I can't think of any named titles for the Venators, but I'm sure a lot of you guys probably know at least a couple off the top of your heads. But, you know, let's just say there's one called Crabox Lightsaber Nunchuck. Right, um, and it was a very popular one because it had lightsaber nunchucks painted on the side. Um, well, maybe they do a Crabox lightsaber nunchuck expansion, kind of like the Chimera uh, at some point, and uh, they're the Resolute. There you go. Um, so, so yeah, like so they might they may do a separate Venator expansion later on down the road, and like that was one of the things that I had. Um, now, granted, it's not folly because you're not only going to play 400-point games. I'm sure once you get enough stuff, you may want to eventually upgrade to, like, 800-point games and, and, and maybe even beyond that. And that's one of the fun things about Armada is playing those bigger games. Um, but really, like, most of the most of the games like that I play or that people tend to play are usually a revolver on the 400-point limit because that's kind of where the game is designed and balanced for. You certainly can do higher-point games, and it's fun, but sometimes you run out of room, right? Um if they release the Architons for the Republic, do you think it will be identical? I do. I think it'll be a different paint job, but I think it'll be identical. Um, and, uh, yeah, that's that's another cool thing. Um, so, yeah, uh, I think it'll be identical. I think they'll, it, I don't think the Architons has changed much. I do think the Pelta is going to have a difference, right? They kind of talked about the Pelta having the closed wings for the Republic. So that is pretty cool. Um, let's see. What else do we got? Um, this is the third time posting this. Sorry, Stephanie, if I missed your chat. There's a lot of chat going in, so let's see what Stephanie has to say. This is the third time posting this. Please see. If the Empire can go with the Republic, what do you think about the Separatists going with the Rebels? So, no, no, no. Um, the Empire will not be able to join forces with the, with the, um, with the Republic. They're going to be totally distinct factions. Uh, however, if you wanted to homebrew that, you could you could certainly run a scenario where they're teaming up. And if that's the case, then sure, you could also, as part of that scenario, you could uh, join the Separatists to the Rebels. Um, but no, the Empire doesn't directly go with the Rebels. Uh, or, 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 the, or It's four individual factions, and none of them are, are like allied with each other naturally. So they're all against each other. Um, I think the, 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 the general kind of initial balance is for separatists to play against, uh, for separatists to play against Republic. But you're absolutely, like, as far as tournaments and everything like that, like, yeah, they can, anyone can go against anyone else. It's the same way it is in Star Wars Legion right now. You've got four factions, and none of them are innately allied with any of the other ones. Now, there's obviously going to be some carryover because the, uh, the Architons, for example, the same model that exists for the Empire will also exist for the Republic at one point. So we're going to get we're gonna get some of that. All right, and I'm going to wrap this up in a little bit. I didn't want this to be a super long stream. Um, oh, okay. So Matt is saying um, Stephanie maybe meant uh, m the models. Okay, so, so maybe, maybe um, there is... There's a few cases where certain separatist models were used by the rebellion. Like I know that there is, um, I know that there is a, a a case where the rebels had a Luker Hulk uh, and things like that, and uh, you know, and where the rebels flew uh, N ones, like Leia flew an N one and stuff like that, in some of the comics and things like that. I think it boils down to recognizability, though, um, because the rebels kind of borrowed some Clone Wars era stuff too, like the Pelta, that was straight out of Clone Wars. So I don't think it's a case where the Rebels will necessarily get a whole lot of Separatist stuff. I don't think they'll get really any of it. Um, but I do think there's a case where uh, Republic stuff goes to both Empire and Rebels. Like the Architons go to the Empire, the Peltas go to the Rebels, right? And so that's, I think, where you get your, your crossover there as far as models being shared. Um, and I'm, I'm trying to think if there's anything else. The Republic might get CR-90s. Um, that could certainly be a thing. Um, yeah, I, I, but 
beyond that, I don't know, like, did the Republic have hammerheads? Like, I don't remember seeing hammerhead cruisers in the Republic. I know they were in the old Republic, but I think the ones that we have now are like a redesign or like a new model, kind of like when they bring back the Corvette, you know, and with a new redesign for, you know, the current year and stuff like that. So, um, no, man, it's exciting, though. I, I've got to, I, I have to clear off my shelves over here. Um, like, I've got Unmatched up here. Um, I've got some, like, Outer Rim and Oak and Iron over here. And, like, I got this new shelf set up specifically because I had so many shelves. I have extra row for Separatists, and I've got an extra row for Republic, and I've got all of these extra rows that were designed specifically for Armada Clone Wars coming out. And, uh... I'm going to run out of room, so I better figure something out. Uh, plus, when, whenever they get around, like, that's why I'm kind of glad Armada has a slower release schedule, because I would I would be out of room already. Um, but yes, um, let's see. Will we be able to use the Clone Wars scuff to play our Armada with original, original trilogy ships? Yes, just not on the same team. You have to go against each other. They're all individual factions. Um, the EC Henry Nebulon B. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's... Um, right here uh this was sent to me I, I painted it up right yeah this was um uh, from quat drive yards it's the only place i know of that you can get it right now let's see um try building a nebulon b swarm list so we can see it in a battle report i've done you know how many nebulon b swarm battle uh lists i've done look up my akbar nebs that's one of my favorite ones to do, an Akbar Nebulon list. Now, now I could do maybe a, a slightly different one, but Akbar Nebulons is is the way to go. I and I love this one, man. This one came out really good. Can you guys see it? Is it focusing? This one was super fun to paint. I don't usually do a lot of like aftermarket like uh, 3D prints and stuff, but there are some cases where I just I have to. Like, oh, here's another one. Um, this is a Mel's miniatures. And this was the Corvus from uh, Battlefront 2, the, the, Re the Rebel redesigned Corvus, or the new Republic Corvus. This, you know, so, so that's a fun one to do also. Uh, so anyone that you can just swap out for an existing ship, at least in a casual or friendly game, is, is fun to do. All right, guys, well, I think that's gonna, I think it's gonna wrap things up. I do, uh, somebody did ask, uh, you know, about uh, huge ships or whatever. I do think there's a chance we could get some, uh, some more huge ships like the, um, I think the Mandator is a great option for the Republic eventually, uh, which kind of preceded the Bellator and stuff like that. But we could get something kind of like the Bellator maybe for the Republic, because um, I think the Republic had really, really big ships before the Clone Wars. Um, and so, like, it could still work. Could still work. Um, all right, guys. Well, uh, if you guys are just joining us late, we're getting ready to wrap up. But the big news was that uh, FFG's dropping teasers for the Munificent uh, which is going to be a, like a, a super red dice heavy ship. Um, kind of like, uh, it's, it, you know, I feel like I'm going to end up flying it a lot like the Architons, although I figure it's going to have, uh, you know, maybe not be quite as fast, but maybe a little more maneuverable than the Architons. We'll, we'll have to see. We'll have to see. Who's better in your opinion, Kenobi or Bale? Who? Um, well... Bale's letting you recover. Bale, I think, I'm going to say Bale right now because Bale has more versatility. Bale works with every fleet because everybody can use nav and or engineering, whereas Kenobi only works with fleets that have um, the, uh, the redirect defense token. Uh, and presumably right now, most will have the redirect defense token, but we don't know if every ship will have the redirect defense token, whereas we do know pretty much every ship can take well yeah every ship can take nav and or engineering so i think bale kind of wins in his in his um the number of fleets that he can uh, contribute to and be effective in um so uh but there are cases where kenobi would be better um and uh, off the top of my head i don't have their point costs directly in front of me because obviously cost also has a, a factor in this so i'm not sure my guess is that kenobi might be cheaper than bale but then again, Bale is also a limited use. Like you could, you know, you could exhaust Bale pretty early and then not have a use for him, whereas Kenobi is going to work the entire game. Granted, you're not getting shot in the first turn. Sometimes you're not getting shot in the second turn. So Kenobi, you know, isn't really going to be used. They're both the same cost. Okay, thank you. Um, yeah, so it, that much is going to be interesting. I think once we have them, 
um, out and will be able to see all the cards that show up and come with these uh, sets, then I'll have a better, uh, I guess, a better background to be able to, like, the wide, the whole picture to be able to break them down and talk about them. Uh, what's your opinion of the obscure ships that uh, AC Henry, I think you mean EC Henry, uh, that EC Henry did a while back? Uh, I've looked at a couple of them. I don't know if I've seen every single one, but uh, I'm a big fan of the work that EC Henry does. Um, they're really nice, and I think they're all good candidates that really should show up in canon again, and I hope they do, and I hope they show up, uh, you know, and I hope they credit him with, uh, you know, kind of giving... Look, look, Star Wars has done some really cool things. Do you know there's a, 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 a Twitter uh, for Veer's Watch, right? And, uh, like, I just retweeted this uh, the other day. It was really cool. But, like, this guy, his, his profile picture is General Veers, and he goes around all the time just looking to see if, you know, like, he's just an advocate and a big fan of General Veers. Um, and he they put him in one of the short stories. Or at least, you know, they kind of did the whole where they reverse your name and kind of put it in there, and, and it was in a, in, in, a, in, a, in a short story that happened to involve General Veers in the most recent book that I'm working my way through right now I, from a certain point of view for The Empire Strikes Back. And I'm like, what a great way to honor somebody who has been a big advocate and been a big part of the community by making them canon. Like, you are now in the, you know, you are an obscure character in Star Wars. Like, that's one of the greatest things that you can do. So I, I, I really like that. Um, all right. Well, let's go ahead and uh, wrap this up because I have a couple of things to do. Uh, but be on the lookout for more Marvel Crisis Protocol unboxings. We're going to be taking a look at... Uh, Mystique and Beast uh, next, and then with Magneto and Toad and Cyclops and Storm all coming after that. And then Monday, we are going to have the uh, preview article for the Separatists, which is exciting. Um, we're also getting really close to having Darth Maul and Anakin Skywalker show up for Star Wars Legion. I also have a battle report where we're proxying them out. You may see that one uh, early next week as well. I want to thank you guys so much for hanging out today. Thank you for watching. Thank you for being a part of this live stream. Thank you for the questions. Sorry I could not get to all of them. I will talk to you soon. Again, be sure to check the links down below. Uh, get some merch. Get some Christmas shopping done. Uh, get get yourself a bag. Get, get yourself one of those dice bags. The Bad Dice Prison. Or you got Bad Dice Prison shirts. I, you know, I get a lot of comments on those. And, you know, People think it's funny to see your dice on Carbonite. You know. Um, or we've got a lot of uh, faction shirts, we've uh, masks, we got gator necks, a lot of stuff like that. People love that. They make for great stocking stuffers for your loved ones. Uh, Darth Maul, Darth Vader masks and gator necks, all kinds of cool stuff like that. You also definitely help support the channel when you do uh, make a purchase. So I want to thank you guys so much for watching. I appreciate all of you. You guys have a fantastic day. Whoa! And I was about to hang up, but we got a super chat from uh, 2612 Greg. Dude, Greg, thank you so much, man. Um, I, you know, like, normally, like, I'd be like, or prioritize your question if you had, but you didn't even have a question. You just wanted to, you know, support the channel. So thanks, Greg. I really appreciate you. Um, that's that's a, that's a really, really generous gift, and uh, it's going to definitely go a long way towards helping make sure that I've got lots of uh, Star Wars Clone Wars ships on the table so I can bring you guys coverage, bring you guys unboxings, reviews, battle reports, all of the games that I cover, as well as the collectibles and, and everything that I try to bring to you guys. It's, it's not cheap. So your contributions are absolutely appreciated. And I thank you so much. Uh, and I guess if there's nothing else, we're going to go ahead and sign off. Thank you guys. And I really appreciate you all. I will talk to you later. And as always, have a great day. And daylight savings time needs to go. It's a bag of farts. <laughs>